We begin with Supreme Court nominee Brett Kavanaugh and the allegation that he sexually assaulted someone in high school. Senators jousted today over plans for a public hearing next week, and the president weighed in as well. Honestly, I feel terribly for him, for his wife, who is an incredible, lovely woman, and for his beautiful young daughters. This is not a man that deserves this. President Trump defended his Supreme Court nominee at a news conference with the president of Poland. Earlier, Mr. Trump said Brett Kavanaugh is ready to defend himself. Judge Kavanaugh is anxious to do it. I don't know about the other party, but Judge Kavanaugh is very anxious to do it. And a delay is certainly acceptable. The other party is Christine Ford, a psychology professor at Palo Alto University in California. She says a drunken Kavanaugh sexually assaulted her at a high school party 36 years ago. The judge flatly denies it and says he is ready to testify Monday before the Senate Judiciary Committee. But Republican Chuck Grassley, chair of the panel, said this morning that Ford has not yet agreed agreed to testify. Democrats pressed for more time. Senate Minority Leader Chuck Schumer called for a full FBI investigation into the allegations and for more witnesses. There must not be a hearing on Monday and then a possible vote on the nominee a day or two after. This morning, Chairman Grassley said there'd be only two witnesses. That's simply inadequate. The Justice Department said last night that Ford's allegations do not involve a federal crime. The FBI won't reopen the background check on Kavanaugh. Not only do women like Dr. Ford, who bravely comes forward, need to be heard, but they need to be believed. They need to be believed. On Capitol Hill today, female Democratic senators accused Republicans of trying to discredit Ford. They compared it with GOP attacks on Anita Hill in 1991, when she accused Supreme Court nominee Clarence Thomas of sexual harassment. In an op-ed today for the New York Times, Hill wrote of Judge Kavanaugh, quote, the weight of the government should not be used to destroy the lives of witnesses who are called to testify. Senator Dianne Feinstein, ranking Democrat on the Judiciary Committee, said the Hill-Thomas hearings did show why it is vital to have more than just the two antagonists testify. She said in a statement, compare that to the 22 witnesses at the 1991 Anita Hill hearing, and it's impossible to take this process seriously. For their part, Republican leaders questioned Democrats' motives, but said they will allow a public hearing to proceed. And it's pretty obvious this is all about delaying the process, but the accuser certainly does deserve a right to be heard. But two Republican women may have a big say in what happens next. Senator Susan Collins of Maine says she is uncommitted on Kavanaugh so far. In a letter today to Judiciary Committee leaders, she called for Kavanaugh's and Ford's attorneys to be allowed to ask questions during the hearing. And Lisa Murkowski of Alaska, also undecided on Kavanaugh, said Congress should take time to hear both sides. Um, some had hoped it would have been a process that was wrapped up by now. It's not. Um, Monday will tell us, uh, tell us a lot more. All of this as the Supreme Court makes ready to begin its fall term October 1st. Here now to help us digest another whirlwind day of developments on this story is our own Lisa Desjardins, who was reporting on Capitol Hill for most of the day. And NewsHour regular Marsha Coyle, who covers the Supreme Court for the National Law Journal. And hello to both of you. So, Lisa, you have spent the day on the Hill. What is the latest in terms of uh, these senators uh, coming together on this? Republicans and Democrats are farther apart on what this hearing should look like Monday. We know a hearing is scheduled to happen now. We do not know if Christine Blasey Ford will appear. As of just a few minutes ago, checking my email, the committee Republicans have not had a response from her or her attorney yet. We also do not know if the public, if this will be an entirely public or some portions of this hearing could be in private. Depends on what she wants, if she's willing to testify Monday. Uh, we do know that Mark Judge, that is the friend of Mr. Cav Judge Kavanaugh, 
Kavanaugh's. Uh, he has said he does not want to testify, and Republicans are not going to force him to testify. So Republicans are full steam ahead with two witnesses only for Monday, should Miss Ford want to appear. Um, meanwhile, the Republicans are putting out phone calls, gathering information. Democrats are not participating in that. They refuse to. On the other hand, Democrats are saying they would like an outside investigation, a background investigation by the FBI. Republicans are refusing to put that in motion. So two clarifying things. Number yes. one, Republicans are calling all the shots on this. Do Democrats have any say in what happened? No. Republicans do control the committee, and they control exactly the format for Monday. And, and in terms of what Republicans are doing, you said they're putting out calls but they're not conducting the kind of investigation that Democrats are saying is necessary. That's right. They are doing calls with potential witnesses, prominently Judge Kavanaugh and also his friend Mark Judge. They were trying to call him, but they ended up exchanging emails with him instead. Um, those are calls for which those people can be held. Um, it's not quite under oath, but they can be considered some a, kind of a form of perjury if you lie on those calls. Usually, Democrats and Republicans are both staff members on those calls. In this case, just Republicans. So, Marcia Coyle, uh, you, in fact, I was also around right. at the time of the Thomas, Clarence Thomas, Anita Hill uh, hearings in 1991. What parallels do you see with that time? Well, I think in terms of similarities, um, you have obviously uh, two women uh, making serious claims against Republican Supreme Court nominees. Uh, you, uh, I, I actually think the 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 differences are stronger. But another uh, similarity would be that both women have taken polygraph tests. Uh, I know that they're not respected much in a court of law, but on the other hand, it's a good faith gesture in trying to show that you are somewhat credible. Uh, but in terms of the differences, they're they're rather stark. Uh, the claim being made by Dr. Blase is uh, much more serious than what uh, and Professor Hill uh, accused Clarence Thomas of. Uh, Professor Hill was bringing a sexual harassment claim. Uh, there was no evidence of any violence, physical uh, touching or anything like that. Whereas uh, Dr. Blasey, I think that's how she says her name, um, she uh, is uh, making a claim of attempted rape. And that's several degrees more serious. Uh, also, um, uh, in, in terms of differences, uh, Professor Hill had quite a lot of corroborating evidence in terms of witnesses to whom she had spoken about what was happening in the office with uh, uh, Clarence Thomas. Uh, Dr. Blasey, she, her corroboration comes much later in 2012 after the incident, and that's to her therapist and to her husband. And there's also the length of time between the actual event and coming forward. Uh, with Anita Hill, it was, I think, even not quite 10 years, but uh, with Dr. Blasey, uh, it's uh, much longer. Um, so uh, there are pretty stark differences. And, and I will say, too, Judy, that the, the context is very different. When Anita Hill made her claims, uh, sexual harassment was not something that was talked right. about a lot. Women knew about it happening in the workplace, but it was not a big issue. This claim, this charge, is being made during the in the middle of the Me Too movement. Right. And certainly, everybody is aware of what has been happening with charges made against very powerful men and how they have fallen because of those charges. Lisa, uh, um, we're being reminded by Marsha that there was corroborating evidence back then. There's not that much of it now. There are some people who Professor uh, uh, Blasey Ford has, has talked to in the last year or two, including therapy sessions with her husband six years ago. But beyond that, not a great deal. Well, one thing is we don't really know because there haven't been really many investigators pursuing this, except for right. the Washington Post reporter who was on the story. And I had several Democrats tell me today we're left with the press being the main investigators at this point. This is why Democrats want the FBI. And now, they're not calling for a criminal investigation. That Some people are getting this confused. They, they know there will not be a criminal investigation. They want the FBI to do a background investigation, which is standard procedure here. Um, and the FBI is choosing not to. Now, I, I think there are also questions. That's why On they what want. grounds? Um, this is part of just a background check of a nominee, which is something that Mr. Kavanaugh has gone through those six times. And when a file is updated, the FBI can be asked to pursue 
a, a new question about this nominee. As I think Marsha can say, that happened with Anita Hill. When the allegations were raised, the FBI looked into that matter, not as a criminal matter, but as a background matter. And I think we're also getting into strange waters here as we see Senator Collins calling for not just senators to ask questions, but opposing counsel a trial in effect that seems unlikely at this time. But Judy, I asked the Senate historian, that has happened in the past, not often, but occasionally. Judy, and one other thing. I'm sorry. One other yeah. thing I was going to say is uh, the, the timing here. I, I went back to look at the, the time frame of the Hill hearings and what's happening right. now. Uh, the news of Anita Hill's claim broke the weekend before the Senate Judiciary Committee actually held the Hill-Thomas hearings. And in that week, they were able to put together 22 witnesses uh, almost an equal number on each side. And it's a very similar, well, it's actually, this hearing is going to be held less than a week after we've really heard everything. But, but again, not allowing, only witnesses, two witnesses, right. not allowing witnesses at this point. Just quickly, though, uh, in terms of the, the, the questions that were asked then, and, and you've been talking to lawyer or the legal team for Anita Hill, what, what are they saying are the kinds of questions we should look for? Uh, this time. If, if it is just going to be uh, Judge Kavanaugh and Dr. Blasey Ford, uh, there's going to be questions for details. How much can uh, the doctor recall about the incident? Try to be as specific as possible. What was the room like? You know, uh, she said she hid in a bathroom afterwards. What was that like? How much can she recall? And for Judge Kavanaugh, expect questions about his high school days. Uh, did he do a lot of drinking? What about his yearbook page that everybody is showing now right. where there seemed to be uh, he and others who uh, really did participate in a lot of drinking? So I think we should look for that. And something else, too, I think we should look at how does the Senate Judiciary Committee handle this? In 1991, it was an all-male, all-white committee. Right. This time, you have four women only on the Democratic side. Right. This is as much a judgment of, of how this committee handles this as it is of the, the two witnesses. Ten men uh, on the, on the Repu 11 men, I think, on, on the Republican, Republican side. side, yes. All right, Marsha Coyle, Lisa Desjardins, we will certainly continue to watch this. Thank you both. Pleasure, Judy.